Alleluia, Christ is risen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. reading from the Acts of the Apostles. The rulers, elders, and scribes assembled in Jerusalem with Annas the high priest, Caiaphas, John, and Alexander, and all who were with the high priestly family. When they had made the prisoners stand in their midst, they inquired, By what power or by what name do you, did you do this? Then Peter filled with the Holy Spirit, said to them, Rulers of the people and elders, if we are questioned today because of a good deed done to someone who was sick, and are asked how this man has been healed, let it be known to you, all of you and to all the people of Israel that this man is standing before you in good health by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom you crucified, whom God raised from the dead. This Jesus is the stone that was rejected by you, the builders. It has become the cornerstone. There is salvation in no one else, for there is no other name under heaven given among mortals by which we must be saved. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Thanks be to God. Let us read together Psalm 23, found on page 4 of your bulletin. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not be in one. He makes me lie down in the green pastures, and leads me inside still waters. He revives my soul.
John. We know love by this, that he laid down his life for us, and we ought to lay down our lives for one another. How does God's love abide in anyone who has the world's goods and sees a brother or sister in need, and yet refuses help? Little children, let us love, not in word or speech, but in truth and action. And by this we will know that we are from the truth, and will assure our hearts before him whenever our hearts condemn us. For God is greater than our hearts, and he knows everything. Beloved, if our hearts do not condemn us, we have boldness before Christ, before God, and we receive from him whatever we ask, because we obey his commandments and do what pleases him. And this is his commandment, that we should believe in the name of the Son, of his Son, Jesus Christ, and love one another, just as he commanded us. All who obey his commandments abide in him, and he abides in them. And by this we know that he abides in us, by the Spirit that he has given us. Here at the Spirit is saying to God's people, Thanks be to God. According to John. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus said, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. The hired hand, who is not the shepherd and does not own the sheep, sees the wolf coming, leaves the sheep, and runs away. And the wolf scatters them and snatches them. The hired hand runs away because the hired hand does not care for the sheep. I am the good shepherd. I know my own, and my own know me, just as the Father knows me, and I know the Father. And I lay down my life for the sheep. I have other sheep that do not belong to this flock. I must bring them also, and they will listen to my voice. So there will be one flock, one shepherd. For this reason, the Father loves me, because I lay down my life in order to take it up again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down of my own accord. I have power to lay it down, and I have power to take it up again. I have received this command from my Father. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord. To see you is the end and the beginning. You carry me and you go before. You are the journey and the journey's end. Amen. Amen. In today's gospel, Christ calls himself the Good Shepherd and tells his disciples the Good Shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. Now this naturally calls up for us the subject of sacrifice. Here in the West, Christians have typically viewed this subject through a particular theological lens, a lens which I believe to be 
incomplete at best and heretical at worst. The theological lens through which we have typically understood the subject of Christ's sacrifice goes something like this. God was angry at the world because of human sinfulness. Humans had violated the divine honor by trespassing against God's laws. God's honor, therefore, demanded satisfaction. The only adequate satisfaction for infractions against the honor of an eternal God was eternal torment in the fires of hell. No fallible human could satisfy the, the demands of divine justice because all of us share by nature in the ancestral, that is, the original sin of our ancestor Adam. So God, in infinite mercy and in response to this dilemma, sent Jesus Christ to live a sinless life on earth and to take upon himself the punishment that God's justice demanded, which he did in his passion and death on the cross. Now, this interpretation of Christ's sacrifice comes to us, so we are told, from the pages of the Bible itself. And while it is true that there are certain biblical passages where Jesus' death is called a sacrifice, the satisfaction theory of the atonement, which this is called, doesn't actually appear in its fullness for another millennium. The 12th century CE, when it was invented by an Archbishop of Canterbury named Anselm. I call the satisfaction theory of the atonement incomplete at best and heretical at worst for reasons both theological and moral. Theologically, I find this theory insufficient because it requires neither the divinity nor the resurrection of Christ, both of which are central to the Catholic faith. The atoning sacrifice must be sinless and must die, but divinity and resurrection are just bits of icing on the cake. Second, the satisfaction theory of the atonement allows us to completely ignore the rest of the Bible, from the Torah to the teachings of Jesus, except in those places where certain passages can be twisted to fit our personal biases or political agendas. Finally, and most importantly, I take theological issue with the satisfaction theory of the atonement because it makes God out to be a monster. God, according to this model, is either unwilling or unable to forgive natural human frailty outright. Satisfaction theory conceives of God as sadistic and abusive, demanding the blood of the innocent before the so-called gospel can be fulfilled. Such a monstrous deity, I would posit, is entirely unworthy of human worship. Morally speaking, I take issue with this interpretation of Christ's sacrifice because of the way in which it has been so consistently used to tolerate and even justify abuse. For example, spouses and children across the centuries, living in fear of domestic violence, have been told by their well-meaning clergy to remember the sufferings of Christ, or think about how the torment of hell would be so much worse than this temporary suffering, while they are being beaten by a partner or parent. 
It is for these reasons, theological and moral, that I call the satisfaction theory of the atonement insufficient at best and heretical at worst. So what then are we to make of Christ's saying in today's gospel? The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. Well, I like to look at the text in the original Greek. And the phrase, lays down his life, could also be translated as places his soul or locates his identity. That which makes me, me, Christ says, I give to you. Let me give you an illustration of what I mean. Do you remember that old song, I Left My Heart in San Francisco? Well, that's what Christ is saying here. <clears throat> Except that San Francisco is you. Growing up, I used to think that Christianity was all about giving your heart to Jesus. But it turns out the truth is, Christianity is actually about Jesus giving his heart to you. Jesus is always saving us. That is, he is guiding us toward a fuller realization of what life can be and by rights ought to be. Not only in the moment of his death, but in every moment of his life. The sacrifice of Jesus is a living sacrifice. Like the sacrifice of a parent who crawls out of bed in the middle of the night to take care of a sick child. Moms and dads, you know what I'm talking about? Everything Christ says and does in the scriptures, from his birth at Christmas to his resurrection at Easter, is part of that saving sacrifice. Insofar as Jesus' death on Good Friday is part of that sacrifice, it is less like an innocent victim being punished on our behalf, and more like the sacrifice of a firefighter who loses his life while rescuing people from a burning building. In that sense, we can honestly say Jesus died to save us. The sacrifice of Jesus is not a violent death to appease the wrath of an abusive parent, but a whole life that is a natural outpouring of divine love. We don't need Jesus to get between us and God. But God needs to get between us and our own self-destructive tendencies. This fuller understanding of the atonement, like satisfaction theory, has profound implications for the way we believe and live as Christians. Theologically, it places the person of Jesus Christ at the center of our faith as our fully divine and fully human Lord and Savior. In the person of Christ, God has taken on flesh and come to dwell among us. In the person of Christ, God has made us partakers of the divine nature. In the person of Christ, God has incorporated us into that mysterious network of relationships that we call the Holy Trinity. Father Randall is fond of telling us, in the words of theologian Catherine Tanner, you've heard it before and I know we're going to hear it again. You could probably say it with me. Do you want to try? God is always seeking to give everything that is God to everything that is not God. According to this model of the atonement, we are invited to listen with the ears of our hearts 
to the entirety of the Holy Scriptures, even those passages that disturb, confuse, and challenge us. According to this model of the Atonement, God is not a sadistic monster, but a loving parent who gets out of bed in the middle of the night to give medicine to a sick child. God is the firefighter who dies in the line of duty. God is the rescuer who gets between us and that which is trying to destroy us. Not today, Satan. Brothers and sisters, do you believe the gospel today? Jesus Christ is the good shepherd who lays down his life for the sheep, who places his soul among us and works for our benefit because it is not separate from his benefit. With this understanding of sacrifice, we will not tolerate or justify abuse, but call it out wherever we find it. We will work for the rehabilitation of offenders and reform our churches to create the kind of culture where offenders know that this is not a safe place to offend. And that, by the way, is the whole purpose of our Safeguarding God's Children program, and I strongly encourage all of you to take it. The understanding of the atonement that I am presenting to you today is one that requires our full commitment as Christians. It is not an either-or martyrdom, but a comprehensive both-and theology of mutual aid. Several years ago, I had the privilege of hearing His Holiness the Dalai Lama speak at Syracuse University on the subject of enlightened self-interest. Enlightened self-interest, according to the Dalai Lama, is not a choice between selfishness and altruism, but the realization that by helping you, I am helping myself. This, I think, is in complete agreement with what Christ said in today's Gospel. The Good Shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. The Good Shepherd places his soul among the sheep. The Good Shepherd identifies fully with the sheep. St. John the Beloved, in our epistle this morning, writes, We know love by this, that Christ laid down his life for us, and we ought to lay down our lives for one another. We are accustomed to hearing the translation of today's gospel as the Good Shepherd, but a slightly more accurate translation from the Greek would be the Model Shepherd, because we, like Christ, are called to be shepherds of one another. And Christ is the model we are meant to follow. God calls us to be and do in our time and place what Christ was and did in his time and place. God calls us today to feed the hungry, to heal the sick, to welcome the stranger, liberate the oppressed, and reconcile the sinner. God calls us to place our souls with the hurting and helpless among us in the same way that Christ placed his soul with us in the Incarnation. May each and every one of you, as you go your way into a weary world this week, May you, as the hands and feet of Jesus Christ on earth, may you place your soul with all God's creatures who are hurting. May you look into the eyes of a friend or a stranger and see your own eyes staring back at you. And 
May you look deeper still and realize that you have been staring into the very eyes of God. Amen. Amen. As you're able, please stand and proclaim our faith, which covers the earth and spans ages by reciting the 19th Creed. We believe in one God, the Father and the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God of God, life from life, true God from true God, begotten of not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake, he was crucified by Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, we acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Come and hear the good news of God. Come and see what Jesus has done. We will tell the story of God in our world. We will share the secret of hope in our lives. Come and explore the truth of the gospel. Come and receive the Holy Spirit of God. We give thanks for those who are celebrating birthdays. Nancy, Karen, Tara, Maddie, and David. We give thanks for those celebrating baptismal anniversaries. Laura, Lisby, Randy, and Kathy. We give thanks for those celebrating wedding anniversaries, Sarah and Ken, Rosemary and Jim, Jody and Michael, Sue and John, Lori and Bud, Beth and Jonathan, Eileen and Joe, Linda and Larry. We give thanks for, for these and all of our families, friends, and neighbors who enact the grace-filled truth that in Christ we are loved, cherished, befriended, and accepted. We give you thanks, God of life. We pray for all who are sick, suffering, or addicted. Sandy, BJ, Kim, Bill, Chris, Paul, Francis, Mary. We pray for all first responders and health care workers. We pray for those who serve in our armed forces, Joe, Kristen, Nathan, Sarah, and Stephen, as well as the leaders of our world, especially Joseph, our president, Gretchen, our governor, and David, our mayor. We pray for help facing the challenges of our lives, times, and natural environment, remembering that through the Spirit, we are not alone. God's love is in us. We seek your help, Holy Spirit of God. We pray for all who have died, Jim. We pray for those who are worrying and those who are grieving. We bring our most profound anxieties to you, O oh God. For Christ knows our hopes, our fears, our questions. We depend on your presence, Christ our risen Savior. 
We pray for Michael, our presiding bishop, Skip, our assisting bishop, and the leaders of churches around the world. We pray for our diocesan standing committee, Randall, our priest, Greg and Michael, our deacons, Chaplain Barrett, and all the people of God. We pray with hope for the future because God is leading us deep into justice and wonder. Help us to follow knowing, O God, that you are joyfully walking us home. O God, by the glorification of Jesus Christ and the coming of the Holy Spirit, you have opened for us the gates of your kingdom. Grant that we, who have received such great gifts, may dedicate ourselves more diligently to your service and live more fully in the riches of our faith. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing 
always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. But chiefly are we bound to praise you for the glorious resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. For he is the true Paschal Lamb who was sacrificed for us and has taken away the sin of the world. By his death he has destroyed death, and by his rising to life again he has won for us everlasting life. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy and gracious Father, in your infinite love you made us for yourself. And when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit, to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit. All honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has told us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen.
the gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you, and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. reciting the prayer of Christ's presence. God of infinite mercy, we thank you for Jesus our Savior, our true mother who feeds us and gives us eternal life. Though we cannot celebrate the Holy Eucharist at this time, we thank you that we have received the sacrament of Christ's presence, the forgiveness of sins, and all other benefits of Christ's passion. Grant that we may continue forever in the risen life of our Savior, who with you and the Holy Spirit lives and reigns, one God, now and forever.
use that. Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace, and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Peace. Good morning, everyone, and welcome. Thank you for being here today. I uh, want to uh, just note that um, the end of May will bring us two festivals, um, Pentecost, at which we will have two baptisms, and Trinity Sunday. Um, and so I invite you to keep the last two Sundays in May marked, especially in your calendar, especially uh, Pentecost, because our tradition is for everyone, if they can, to wear red on that day. So be looking forward to that, looking forward to some baptisms and having lots of fun on those two celebrations. Also want to remind you that beginning on June 6th, we're going to be adding a noon service outside for the summer. So uh, if you would prefer to worship outside or you know some folks who don't feel quite ready to be indoors yet because of the pandemic, let them know, please tell them that we'll be doing an outdoor service beginning June 6th. Also be watching your flyers. There will be some news coming out about our handbells and our handbell choir. So you want to keep an ear open for that as well. And I'll just leave you with that tantalizing little comment. And you can uh, keep an eye on your newsletter for that. Am I forgetting anything, Donna? Okay. Please stand for the blessing. The God of peace who brought again the Lord Jesus Christ, the great shepherd of the sheep, from the blood of the everlasting covenant, make you perfect in every good work according to his will, working in you that which is well-pleasing in his sight, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be amongst us and remain with us forever. Amen. Let us go forth to love and serve the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia.